This video is looking at the immediate physiological responses to training, which is our last dot point for the critical question, what is the relationship between physical fitness, training, and movement efficiency? Now your syllabus asks you to learn about heart rate, ventilation rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, and the lactate levels. Your learn too wants you to examine the reasons for the changing patterns of respiration and heart rate during and after submaximal physical activity. So let's have a look at heart rate and ventilation rate together. Okay, so heart rate is the number of contractions the heart makes in 60 seconds. So your heart rate per minute. Uh, your ventilation rate is the number of breaths that you take in a minute. Both of these are going to increase in response to physical activity. In fact, both of them will even begin to increase before physical activity in anticipation because the athlete knows what's coming. Uh, the nerves and stuff will automatically increase the heart rate and increase, increase the ventilation rate. Throughout the rest of the exercise or the rest of the physical activity, uh, your heart rate and your ventilation rate are going to increase as a result of the increase in carbon dioxide in the blood. Carbon dioxide levels in the blood are directly proportional to the intensity of the exercise and amount of oxygen being used, and therefore they change in proportion, so therefore the heart rate and the ventilation rate are changing in proportion to the intensity of the physical activity. When physical activity stops, it takes a while for your carbon dioxide levels to completely return to their resting levels, and so it will take a while also for your heart rate and your ventilation rate to decrease. Essentially, Heart rate and ventilation rate are all about getting rid of carbon dioxide and also allowing for a bit more delivery of oxygen to your muscles. During exercise, stroke volume will also increase. Stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out of the left ventricle of the heart with each contraction. Uh, this is going to increase uh, quite early in the um, exercise or in the physical activity, but then it's going to plateau at about the 65% maximum heart rate uh, intensity level. Uh, the reason for this is because of an increase in blood returning to the heart due to muscular contractions, which naturally result in greater diastolic filling of the heart, uh, which increases the stroke volume. So that is greater filling of the heart when it's not contracting, which then means that more blood goes out when the heart contracts. The body also has a high demand for oxygen and therefore the heart contracts more forcefully during exercise. And there is less resistance to the blood moving out of the ventricle uh, into the arteries due to the vasodilation or the widening of the blood vessels. Cardiac output uh, is also going to increase. Now, cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out of the left ventricle in a minute. Uh, and it is essentially uh, your stroke volume multiplied by your heart rate, and that's gonna give you your cardiac output. Uh, so it increases early due to the increase in stroke volume, and then follows, uh, continues to increase, but follows the heart rate from then on, uh, beyond the, particularly beyond the 65% of maximum heart rate of intensity. The reasons are therefore also a combination of the reasons for the increases in heart rate and in stroke volume. Uh, so there's greater blood flowing back to the heart because of muscle contractions. Uh, there's less resistance to the blood going out due to vasodilation. There's an increase in demand for oxygen uh, due to the working muscles, but also there's a larger production of carbon dioxide, which is causing that increase in heart rate. So all of that combines to cause an increase in cardiac output. That is more blood moving around your body. Now in trained athletes, heart rate, ventilation rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output all increase just before exercise uh, because their body is responding to the familiarity uh, of the, the context that they're in and they're aware that their body is about to start doing physical activity and their body then responds by increasing these quite early. When we come to lactate levels, now lactate levels refer to the amount of lactate and or lactic acid in your blood. Uh, lactate levels increase in response to exercise uh, but spike at the lactate inflection point, which is also known as the lactate threshold. Now, you can see on the graph here, that lactate threshold, uh, the lactate levels rise at the beginning due to the body using lactic acid energy system uh, as the body starts to adjust to the change in physical activity levels. Uh, but then it will plateau for quite a while before it then spikes uh, up quite highly at that lactate inflection point, uh, which is when your body, around 85% of your maximum heart rate, starts to really heavily rely on the lactic acid energy system, which then produces uh, lactic acid as waste product. Uh, so the lactic acid is going to then increase rapidly once you get to that point, uh, causing fatigue quite quickly, 
and causing the athlete to either decrease their intensity or fatigue completely and stop uh, their physical activity. Oh.